What's up guys, DRock 1992 here. Uh, for this next video, I'm going to highlight an actor who's, he's really disappeared from the spotlight. You know, from the acting spotlight. He once, back in the 90s, was a pretty successful comedic type actor. And, um, you know, he was well known in the 90s, but then, early 2000s, but then he fell off for some reason. And not really quite sure why, to be honest with you. The guy I'm talking about will be uh, Brendan Fraser. Um, he definitely, um, like I said, he has disappeared from the Hollywood spotlight. He once was a viable actor in the 90s, a very a good actor in the 90s and early 2000s, but he has since disappeared. Uh, but I'm going to mostly highlight his best stuff, his best work. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. Um, <clears throat> first in film, his first movie was a very, I think it was a cameo in a movie called Dogfight in 1991. His first starring role was the next year in 1992 with a movie called Encino Man. He plays a caveman. There's these three kids. There's these three guys that find him. Um, and yeah, he plays a caveman in the movie. And um, from what I've heard, the movie is pretty funny. I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, that's his first. That's the first real big exposure people got to Brandon Fraser. Uh, Fraser. I think you pronounce it Fraser. Also in the same year, he stars in the movie School Ties. And, I mean, he's in it with Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. I just mention it because he's in there with that, with those actors, definitely. But he has a starring role in it, and it's only his third movie, really. Only the third movie he's been in. Um... He appeared as that character as the Caveman Link in a couple cameo appearances in two movies starring Polly Shore, who was one of the kids in that Encino Man movie. Uh, he appears in as Link in Son-in-Law in 1993, and then 1994's In the Army Now. He appears in those two. In 1994... He stars in the movie Airheads, which um, is also a very early role for Adam Sandler. Steve Buscemi is in the movie as well. It's about these three, these three guys in a band who take a radio station hostage, but the guns they use are actually just water guns. So it seems like a very crazy, a very silly type movie, very silly comedy. I haven't seen it. I'd like to see it. But um, he was in that movie. And uh, also the same year, he starred in a movie called The Scout, which I have heard of. Um, it's about him as a baseball pitcher, and apparently he's pretty nuts in this movie. You know, pretty... has anger issues or something like that. Um... So he was in this movie as well. Um, and it really was... These roles were all really good. The breakthrough role for him was not Sino Man. The breakout role, I think, is coming up, definitely. I'll be talking about it coming up. Um, 1997, he stars as George of the Jungle in George of the Jungle stars as George in George of the Jungle. I remember watching this movie a long time ago. I, I've at least watched it a couple of times. It's been a long time. But he starred in the first one. There was a second one as well, but he wasn't in it. He, um... He... Only three of the actors, as a matter of fact, from the original Return for the sequel, which it was a direct-to-video. Which I have also, I think, watched before. I think I've watched it. But, um... But, yeah, Brendan Fraser, um, as George of the Jungle, I thought he was pretty funny back in the day. 
as George. And, um, and yeah, it turned out to be, you know, it turned out, it got mixed reviews, 56% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it didn't do bad. And it made money, 170, over $174 million on a $55 million budget. And this is a live-action adaptation of the cartoon George of the Jungle, which actually I wasn't sure. I didn't know there was a cartoon. I don't believe I knew there was a cartoon. And, well, this cartoon was in 1967, so I definitely didn't know it was a cartoon. Um, But, no doubt about it, the breakout for Brett and Fraser was 1999's The Mummy. It really was a breakout for him. He's the lead guy in the movie. Uh, the Mummy... I mean, The Mummy was so successful. The Mummy... The first, the first Mummy made $415.9 million on an $80 million budget. It... A blockbuster, if you could ever say, you know, a blockbuster in all senses of the word. In, you know, just a complete blockbuster. And it actually is a loose remake of a 1932 film, which I didn't know. I've watched part of The Mummy before. I've watched part of it. It might have been that or the sequel, the second sequel to it, the first sequel to it. I'm not sure, though. Um, <clears throat> anyway, The Mummy was in 1999. There was a sequel in 2001, The Mummy Returns. And then there was kind of a prequel in 2008, The Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Uh, I think it was more like a prequel type movie. Um, the reason I'm doing this Brendan Fraser video right now, the reason I have him on my mind is because I watched this upcom this movie yesterday. I watched Bedazzled. Um, I just watched it yesterday. Uh, it was with him and Elizabeth Hurley. My God, Elizabeth Hurley is hot in this movie. Did I mention she was hot? Um, this movie is about <clears throat> his character is a in the movie is a loser, you know, a, a loser type guy at a dead end job. He sells his soul to the devil for seven wishes, and he wishes all sorts of things, you know, all sorts of cliche wishes that don't end up going well for him. Uh, it's a funny movie, definitely. The main reason I wanted to watch it was because of Elizabeth Hurley. Uh, but I also like the movie as well. The movie was good. It really was. I, I liked I, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, after that, you kind of saw him go down. It, you kind of saw his career go downhill a little bit. Um, you know... He was in this Looney Tunes movie in 2003, um, Looney Tunes Back in Action, which I don't think, I don't think it did the best job. Well, it didn't do very good box office wise. It actually lost money, but he got mixed reviews for Rotten Tomatoes. Um, that was just, I'm just referring to this one because it's, you know, everybody knows about the Looney Tunes. Um, he was in the movie Crash in 2004. Only reason I mention it is because there's some pretty big actors in the movie. It's got an, it's an ensemble cast and it has, um, among the names, you know, Sandra Bullock, Matt Dillon, Ludacris or Chris Ludacris Bridges, um, Terrence Howard, um, and Brendan Fraser also in the movie. So he was in that ensemble cast. 
Uh, I haven't seen the movie, but um, I've just heard of the name. I've heard of the movie. In 2008, he stars in Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is kind of well-known a little bit. You know, it's one of his later movies that maybe some people have heard of. Um, he has a supporting role in the film. It makes a lot of money. Um, it makes a lot of money, and it got, gets mixed reviews. It got mixed reviews, so it was pretty good. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen it myself, but, um, but yeah, um, in 2009, he makes a cameo appearance in G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. I have watched this movie, and I thought it was really good. Actually, I didn't really know he made a cameo in the movie. I may have, I may have actually picked up on it when I watched it, but I kind of forgot he starred in the movie. It was only a cameo. I can't really talk about anything else on his filmography because I don't really know any other film. He did a movie in 2010 called Extraordinary Measures with Harrison Ford. That's one he did. Um, he did an animated film, Escape from Planet Earth, in 2013. Had a supporting role in it. Um, he, just last year, he was in the movie Gimme Shelter. Or, a couple years ago, he was in a movie called Gimme Shelter. Um... <clears throat> Which, I at first, when I saw the title, I thought it was about the Rolling Stones, because they have a song called Give and Shel Gimme Shelter, but um, it wasn't about that at all. You um, can tell I haven't seen the movie. Uh, but anyway, um, he's in this movie with James Earl Jones and Vanessa Hudgens from uh, Disney fame. Uh... And then just last year, he was in the nut, the animated movie The Nut Job, which did not get good reviews at all. Um, it really wasn't... Um, it made money. It made pretty good money, but... When a movie has... I mean, it only got 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it really did not do well at all. But yeah, he was in the movie. He, again, a supporting role. But... And that's it, really, for his movie career. There is no doubt about it. Like I have said, he just doesn't have the same impact in movies that he used to have. And it's unfortunate because, you know, like I said, I thought he was good in George of the Jungle, even though I haven't seen it in years. I thought he was really good in Bedazzled. Um, and I want to see all the Mummy movies. I do. Uh, they're on my bucket list. Um, but yeah, his impact in movies definitely has waned. But maybe there's a possibility. There's always a possibility he can come back and be that type of actor, or a better than that type of actor he was in the late 90s, in, in the 1990s. Because he was a top actor in the 90s, no doubt about it. Maybe he can get back to that level. I mean, as for television, there's really not a whole lot to talk about. He was in an episode of The Simpsons in 1998. Um, he appeared on two episodes of King of the Hill in 2000 and 2005, and he appeared in three episodes of the show Scrubs between 2002 and 2004. And he's actually going to be in a miniseries called Texas Rising, which is coming out this year. Um... He is the third build actor in. Actually, he is. He's going to play a supporting role in the in the mini series. Uh, it's going to be 480 minutes, which they'll probably divide up into a few episodes. But um, Sons of Liberty, uh, Texas Rising. It's all about the Texas Revolution, um, and uh, Texas and versus Mexico and um, and all that sort of thing uh, but he's, he's gonna be in that 
And that's it for the video on Brendan Fraser. Uh, DRock1992 out.